I was all ready to request some super Irish shit because I thought you were going to oh, be no, doing no. like a pre St. Patrick's we're, Day we're thing. We're handling that too. No worries. No worries. That's coming. We're not nearly done tonight. Okay. This is me. Come on. We are going to have that too. But it just today happened to fall on Douglas. And I brought and I brought Hibernian hippo. Oh yes. Big green fucking hippo. I Tara, I don't know how to break this to you, but they do not have hippos in Ireland. Actually, they have found evidence of prehistoric hippos on the British Isle. They had Paris. They were about like a size, one and a half times the size of our current hippo. And they had periscopic eyes. Look it up. They found the fossils. Prove it. I'm not kidding. I know you're not. That's why I'm scared. No, I did not dye my hair, but you're not the first person to tell me that my hair looks darker today. I don't know what it is. The lighting. It looks cool, though. It, it, it needs a washing. Tara, the last story tonight. You say this a lot recently. Brace yourself, ladies. Oh. Yeah. But let's start with some more entertaining fare, shall we? Oh, it's time for the jingle. Come on, where is it? Where is it? Where? There it is. Yes. All right. Each week, Catherine goes out on the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff, and brings it back here. A little segment we like to call "What the fuck is wrong with you?" And oh, okay. Crazy. You know, in the heat of the moment, you, you, you've done something wrong, and sometimes maybe you would be prompted to run from the police. <laughs> in theory. Don't you think that the point of attempting to run from from the police would be, I don't know, actually escaping? Generally. Yeah, this one, not so much. Half-naked DUI suspect tries to flee in toy truck. Does it count as DUI if you're only in a toy truck? As, as uh... Can you drive a toy truck while intoxicated and get arrested for it? Jonesboro, Arkansas, 28 year old woman is facing criminal charges after allegedly trying to flee the scene of a car crash in her son's battery operated toy truck. Police say J.B. Kraft was drunk when she crashed her grand aunt into the side of a mobile home. When is to say Kraft got out of the car and jumped onto a Power Wheels truck and sped off. According to police, crap was pretty irate when they caught up with her as well as being without any pants. Of course, she didn't have any pants on because it's our show. Why would she have pants on? They also say she was very drunk with a blood alcohol level of 0.217, which is three times the legal limit. It's facing charges ranging from disorderly conduct to driving with a suspended license. You How know, is she alive. <laughs> There's that moment. That's like a quarter of her blood was alcohol. 0.25 is 25%, children. <laughs> How are you still fucking alive when a quarter <laughs> of your blood is alcohol? And we have to get the, the obligatory go home truck, you are drunk, out of the way. Yeah. Um, a Power Wheels. Do, do you think there was a so long coppers involved in that one? Maybe. All right, fine. Point two five percent is not twenty five percent. I was an art major for a reason. I'm just saying that's really high. It is. That's the difference between, you know, waking up with a hangover and waking up with a regret, you know? Seriously. Are you watching the channel scroll? They're just like falling all over themselves to tell me I'm stupid. I know I'm stupid. <laughs> you know I'm stupid. Have you not watched this show? I'm a well, fucking idiot. When you say it, it takes all the fun out of it for them. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm aware that I'm an idiot. I'm a self-aware idiot. I just... <sighs> really? She... All right. I, I, I think there is a certain level of irony here that she had a suspended license, yet she attempts to ride off on yet another vehicle. 
Which you don't, vehicle. you don't need a license for a Power Wheels. I had I had I wanted one of those when I was well, a no, kid. Well, no, they let so children bad. drive those. They'll let anyone drive those. I wanted one of those when I was a kid so bad. My parents never got it for me. I don't think I ever had one of those, too. <laughs> I just it, there. There's nothing in the article. Nothing in the article explains where her pants went. Nothing. No. Just sometime between when she got on the power wheels and when the police caught up with her. And she had to be pretty close to her home. Like, I imagine she lives in one of the mobile homes because it was her son's toy car. So she either took the toy car out of her car to escape on it or was she was close enough plan? to home that the toy car was in the yard. Was this a plan, do you think? She had this set up in advance. This great Maybe she's a really big fan of the show. <laughs> it's a great Machiavellian. It's like, what do I have to do to get on what the fuck is wrong with you? Gee, funny you should mention that. We got a lot of Florida this week. Holy crap. Oh, of course we do. Of Florida. Um, it's the state that keeps on giving. Yeah, no kidding. So there's a lot of uh, rumbling right now about the whole health care thing. And, you know, uh, Obamacare. And you're going to have to get pay for health care next year. And yada, yada, et cetera, et cetera. Um, somehow, I don't think this is going to help the health insurance industry's image. Florida healthcare company creates buzz with beer cart Fridays. Employees at a Port Orange healthcare staffing company are allowed to drink on the company's tab on company time. Thanks to a perk known as beer cart Fridays. Vance Medical CEO Jennifer uh, Frusielli told the Daytona Beach News Journal she's been rolling out the beer cart for two years as part of a, quote, unorthodox corporate culture that rewards employees for hard work. Uh, the company also hosts costume, hosts costume days on Halloween, barbecues on the clock, and a birthday get-out-of-jail-free card for a paid day off. Employees are restricted to one beer, which Fucelli says is a small price that, that, quote, pays huge dividends. Really? Two things. Yeah. One, I know somebody whose job does this in New York. Okay. What job is that? It's, uh, he, he does IT work. Okay. That's... Um, two, my first job out of college, whenever they had like a party for any reason, there, were, there was always booze. Hmm. And everybody would be fucking lit at like noon in the office handling advertising well, so this okay. is not advertising is far. fine because you know if you're drunk when designing advertising you're not accidentally billing somebody's insurance three hundred thousand dollars for a band-aid yes but i'm just saying this is not an unheard of practice i love how she tries to say they only get one beer who is going around counting well, the person I know whose job does this, um, it's not just beer on the beer cart. They call it the beer cart, but it's like a full bar cart. Like you can get mixed drinks and shit. You can get one drink. OK, bust out the Everclear. I just it. Yeah, this is not something I, I do not want to combine. Health care authority bureaucracy with booze. Because then weird shit starts to happen. You know? I don't know. Maybe it would get better. Maybe things would get better if some healthcare employees were just like, fuck it, paid. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, when have you ever know? I, I've known very few people who are benevolent when they're drunk. I, I seem to think dr drinking tends to make people more asinine. At least in my estimation. Yeah, but they also care less. True. About little things like billing, invoices, collection hey, calls. Hey, is five, hey, is five dollars a lot of money? Is five, five, I don't, is five? Sure. Okay, you owe me five dollars. Five, five dollars. Okay. I mean, you're really, you're really hurting me here. <laughs> five dollars for a new spleen i mean god but i guess if i have to pay i have to pay speaking of butts um 
This I is don't like that segue. This is something I thought was a thing of the past. I thought this ended in the last decade. Apparently, I was wrong. We now have we. You have a smartphone. I have a smartphone. We have these nice, smooth, touchy phones where you touch the buttons to it. But they didn't used to be like this. Back in the olden days, phones that you carried in your pocket had real buttons on them. And sometimes if you put them in the wrong pocket, you'd push the buttons. It was a phenomenon known as butt dialing. I didn't know this still happened, but apparently... Well, we covered the reverse butt dial a couple weeks ago. (laughs) Yeah, well, this one, uh, that, that guy was already in jail. This guy is on his way there. A butt dialer? A pair of butt dial to Oregon police leads to drug bust. How do you butt dial the police? A accidental call made without the caller's knowledge can result in an overheard conversation and maybe some awkwardness if the wrong things get said. But in a recent Oregon case, the call was beyond awkward. It may have been incriminating. Raleigh Reynolds, 25, was arrested on felony drug charges Monday after his apparent, quote, butt dial. I love that an actual news organization, this is an ABC affiliate, has to keep using the phrase butt dial in a real news story. Yeah. Um, the emergency dispatcher tracked, he apparently dialed 911 with his ass. Dispatcher uh, tracked the phone's GPS signal to an alley to a local bar. Long added that the two people on foot nearby, both of whom denied having a working cell phone. One scene officer spoke loud, so loudly that the dispatcher confirmed she heard him through the cell phone. So uh, Reynolds was jailed on multiple drug charges, released on bails, currently currently awaiting a court uh, appearance. Um, well, here's the thing, like. Can he make an argument? Can he? Oh, sorry, it's auto playing. Make it stop. stop. I didn't do it. Can he? Can he make a case for getting that evidence thrown out in court because you can't be forced to self-incriminate? I uh, no, 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 no. He wasn't forced to. He, you know, his ass gave third state's evidence, but not like purposely. <laughs> Okay, maybe his ass can get, you know, a reduced sentence. I still want to know how you butt dial nine, how you accidentally, like, do you have the police on speed dial? And if you're doing drug deals, why do you have the police on speed dial? I, oh, oh, Knox wins. His ass is busted. No, not yet. Uh, What? I just, it, it, this is why, I mean, nowadays you have the accidental voice dial. Which can be really bad, considering some circumstances you might call out for, you know, things. I once butt dialed my ex-husband from a concert and left his work number and left him like three minutes of this concert on his voicemail. Three minutes, because that's the longest message his voicemail would allow. And he couldn't skip the message. So he just had to listen to like three minutes of a band he didn't even like and crowd noise on his work voicemail the next day. Oh, oops. I OK, now we're starting to descend into unhappy times. Mm. Nothing that happens from here on out is good. I warn you now. We're still in Florida. I think I think the entire rest of this is Florida. It's like a big ass Florida night. OK. We need that gif of Bugs Bunny, like, sawing Florida off at the state line. You had in-laws. Once upon a time. Do you like the in-laws? They were very nice, yes. I'm sure they're still very nice, I, you know. So you never had a problem with your in-laws? No. Lots of people do. Yeah, I got lucky. I had very nice in-laws. This, they, they come up with interesting ways to deal with the situation, um... Normally, they don't hand their kids knives and tell them to off grandma. (gasps) Florida woman accused of asking kids to murder her in-laws. Florida woman is on jail for $5 million bond after she plotted to have her young children 
murder her in-laws. Leticia Silva of Lakeland, Florida, is accused of mailing her daughters, ages seven and nine, a knife from jail last December. She was already in jail. Sylvia, let, let you're supposed try. to smuggle knives into jail. <laughs> Not out. <laughs> Not out. They already have knives on the outside. They're allowed. Sylvia allegedly instructed the kids to use the blade to murder their paternal grandparents in Greenville, North Carolina. They lost custody of children. She was arrested for possession of methamphetamines and sent to prison. The young daughters had lived with their in-law for seven years. Murder plot went awry after the children's grandmother found the knife under one of the girl's pillows in early February. I'm sorry, does the knife fairy come if you leave a knife under your pillow and give you a dollar? I want to know, like, when I was seven, (sighs) if I got mail, my mom was still opening that mail for me because I was seven. Like, if I got a package... (sighs) My mom would be helping me open that package. Presumably, if you're going to mail a knife, it's not going to be in an envelope. So how did this go unnoticed? Well, even more. OK, they've been living with the kids for they've been living with grandma and grandpa for seven years. And how One fucked of, up does that kid have to be to just stash the knife, qui- knife quietly under the pillow? Well, she didn't want mom to get in trouble. Uh. No, I mean, all right, one of them is seven. That means they've the, the only parents they've ever known is grandma and grandpa. And I'm sorry, mom. Yeah. But grandma and grandpa have seven years of Christmas on your ass. Well, no, how long has she been in jail? Well, they've been they've been in uh, her young daughters had live had lived with her in-laws for seven years. Oh, OK. So grandma and grandpa, you know what, regardless, regardless of whether or not they're going to do it or they're on your side, you do not ask young children to kill people. Yeah, it's just you don't do that. Hire a hitman like everybody else. You don't ask your fucking young children to kill people. If you can't afford a hitman, figure some shit out. I don't know. (laughs) Okay, so there's more than one way to skin a grandma. That's what I'm saying here. And it does, none of them should involve a seven-year-old. The next story, and I really hope Lewis is listening to this. This is like, this is also Florida. And ladies and gentlemen, this story is magic. Lewis, I hope to God you're still paying attention. Naked man declares he loves cocaine and needs more. Snowflame feels no pain. (laughs) Crestview, a 21 year old man who told officers he loved cocaine and needed more cocaine, was arrested after he was caught running naked through an apartment complex. February 24th, the Crestview Police Department received numerous reports from Bel Air Apartments about a man running naked and yelling through the complex. At one point, he tried to get into a car of a woman and her young child. When Lawman arrived, the man, now wearing pajama pants, leaped onto the hood of the patrol car and wouldn't get down until ordered. He then lay in the grass nearby where he made several comments about loving cocaine and needing more cocaine. Then he got up and tried to run away. When officers ordered him to stop, he ran head back toward the officer, dove head first in a slide to the officer. The officer tried to handcuff him, but he got away. The officer gave chase. The man was tased, tased, but when the chase ended, he tried to run away and received a second jolt of the taser. At that point, the man took off his pajama pants and was naked again. Statements from the defendant were not possible as he would only state he loved cocaine and needed more cocaine. Snowflake feels no pain. You do not need more cocaine, sir, (laughs) because you have already done all of the cocaine. (laughs) You left none for the rest. Clearly, the cocaine is gone because you have done all of the cocaine (laughs) in the world. Columbia is closed. (laughs) 
<laughs> all no, no. of Colombia decided to fucking retire. No, no, come back tomorrow. Because of you. We don't have more cocaine tomorrow. We do not have any cocaine tonight. Come back mm. tomorrow. This one guy, he did it all. They're, they're sold the fuck out. <laughs> Cocaine's out of stock. It's off the menu. You did all the cocaine. <laughs> I'm just, it's just, I love cocaine. <laughs> Or I, I love really, really, really big Eric Clapton fan. <laughs> I adore how halfway through this story, he managed to get pants and then lose the pants again. <laughs> Classic love story. <laughs> Boy needs pants. Boy gets pants. Boy loses pants. <laughs> Boy gets pants back. Boy loses pants again. Boy Tales does all the time. Okay. Snowflake needs no pants. <laughs> Snowflake needs no pants. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. This is. How do you end up here? You do all of the cocaine. All of it. That's all a lot of, of money. It. Look, that's a lot of money. OK. And I'm sitting here, and I'm going, huh, I could get cocaine or I could get a 51 inch big screen plasma TV. I'm getting the big screen plasma TV. Are we trying to apply logic to the thinking of a person who dove onto the hood of a patrol car and screamed <laughs> that he needed more cocaine? Are we trying to come are we down? Trying to, are we are we really saying that this person should have had the forethought to go? I could have a 51 TV. <laughs> I don't think this is a person who is thinking rationally at any time during this day. I love that he was on the hood and he would. Sir, please get off the hood of the car. I love cocaine. Can you just picture him like a fucking flying squirrel? Like, <laughs> all Jimmy Snooker fly, Superfly Snooker onto the hood of the police car. I love like, cocaine. <laughs> like. Those cops had to just be like, oh, oh, my. yeah, OK, yeah, someone in the chat. It's a little dated, but OK, I'll give it to you, Dark Hawkeye. Charlie Sheen, eat your heart out. Mm. Yeah. I God damn. Your move, Sheen, your move. <laughs> Snowflame. Oh, Snowflame, how the mighty have fallen. You used to have superpowers. Now you have no pants. OK, in that the way it always goes, <laughs> ladies, I mean, one minute you're hanging out with little boys because you're Batman. <laughs> the next oh. you're just hanging out with little boys. Oh. Yeah, come at me with your hate for for ruining Batman. Bring it. I'm not going to have to because we've I, got, I'm telling them we've got Bring one it. more story. We, we, we've got one more story. Um. Ladies, clench. Time to play another game of that doesn't go there. Uh oh. And kids, it's the daily double for real Z. Oh, her I saw this. Had loaded this revolver. Is a bad idea. In her vaju. Handgun found inside Oklahoma during strip search. Oklahoma woman was arrested Monday on drug charges, had a loaded handgun hidden in her vagina. The weapon was discovered during a search of Christy Don Harris, 28, and a female police officer. Um, the cop spotted the handle of the five shot revolver, quote, sticking out from inside Harris, who was seen at the right. Should a barrel up? At least put it so that if the thing goes off, bullets are shooting out of her <laughs> vagina, not into it. Because at least then you've got a bullet shooting vagina, and that's pretty cool. <laughs> at least then somebody's got a good story about how they got shot in the leg. You wouldn't fucking believe it. This Miz chick shot me with her vagina. Mizuki in the channel. Beware, man, it's loaded. Okay, Don't wild. Put it handled down. Wild wind, sex pistol. You are doing it wrong. Whenever possible, you want bullets going away from you. 
away. In a less you. shocking find, investigators also discovered plastic baggies containing methamphetamine lodged in the crack of Harris buttocks. The Freedom Arms 22 caliber handgun was loaded with three live rounds and one spent shell. That is possibly the world's most powerful vibrator. (laughs) No, no. I mean, if you need to shoot yourself in the cervix to get off, you've been doing porn too long. There's a picture of the gun. I want to put that on the big screen there. That's that's the gun. Wowzers. I, I say I. (laughs) Harris eventually complied with the uh, cop's orders. I noticed at that time a wooden and metal item sticking out from her vagina area. That's never something you want to... Never something you want to hear. It's not what Kiss meant by love gun. (laughs) Samantha, oh God! Your, your vagina is not storage for anything. Your vagina is not storage for your drugs. It's not storage for your crack pipe. It's not storage for your spare fucking change. It's definitely not storage for your loaded gun. Samantha Brown, you have to get out of here. Your vagina is loaded. The only reason you should be putting things in there is, you know, to catch blood. <laughs> Or for recreational purposes. Uh, That's it. That's it. Those are the only reasons things should go in there. Oh, God. Not for storage. Never for storage. Guns. (laughs) Get a fucking holster. Guns don't kill people. Vaginas with guns kill people. I tell you, if every if every woman started carrying a gun pointing out of her vagina, I bet you the NRA would change their tune like that. (laughs) If all of a sudden you had like double barrel vaginas all over America, Wayne LaPierre Uh, would suddenly feel a little bit differently about concealed carry permits, wouldn't he? There's a whole new meaning to the fucking concealed carry (laughs) permit. Uh, Excuse me, ma'am. Do you want to purchase a holster with that? No. No, I got a holster right here. <laughs> oh, God. And I mean, you know, good luck rapists. Uh, I, Maybe it's an awesome idea. Maybe we should all start carrying guns up our vagina. Just point it out, not in. It would, it would, it would, it would just, it would really put the wheels back on feminism, wouldn't my it? My show, my show. So, yeah, we, we've learned... That's not a place for firearms. You can have my gun when you pry it from my cold, dead <laughs> vagina. <laughs> well played, right <laughs> now. Well played. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Um, we've learned that some drunk drivers are just that determined to drive drunk. Even yeah. if it's at two miles an hour. Yeah, even if it's in a panel car. I'm sorry, Kiva. You just you get your arms and like. I mean, come on. If you ever had any dignity, it's gone. You know what? At the point where you're pantsless in a fucking Power Wheels running from the cops, you didn't have any dignity to start with that day. Mm, yeah no. yeah you pawned all your dignity for booze about six hours ago uh, hey we learned that you know healthcare plus booze equals deep discounts yes somebody like ship a crate of Jim Beam to Blue Cross Blue Shield Who needs fucking Obamacare? We will solve the healthcare crisis hell yeah just get all the billing people hammered there you go Send State Farm a boat of tequila with our compliments. Problem solved. Just no paddle cars. No, no paddle. We've learned that your butt can be your own worst enemy. 
It can get you in trouble. It can it can get you in trouble making and receiving calls. Uh, really, butts and phones don't mix. That's the lesson, I think. Yeah, we've learned that in many ways. I just yeah. Keep the phone away from your ass. Yeah. In, in any. We've learned that if you're going to try and kill your in-laws, use assassins who cannot be bribed with a PlayStation. Use assassins. I'm pretty sure your seven year old is not Natasha Romanov. Sweetie, I want you to stab Grammy in her sleep. No, Grammy got me PS3. See, that's all you need, man. Kids are all about the money. Ah, my God. I wonder how much more. Oh, she's in jail. A five million dollar bond. Yeah. Damn. You are not getting out. Mm -mm. (laughs) Although I am. I am curious if there is a knife fairy. Now, here's the question. Like. If you kill the people who are the guardians of your children, would she be happier if her kids were in the foster system? I don't think she's thinking that far. She sent a knife to a seven year old in the mail. Yeah. This is not a woman with a great deal of forethought. Yeah. And we learned that the uh, mythical vagina dentata is not a man's greatest fear. No. (laughs) It's the vagina Glock. (laughs) Fully automatic. Fully automatic vagina. There's a great band name. Well, you already got the fully automatic orgasm, so the fully automatic gun just sort of kind of goes along with it. And I think now I want to start like an all girl punk band <laughs> called Fully Automatic Vaginas. I, I think the, the the most important thing we learned this week is that no fleet feels no pain <laughs> and needs more cocaine. <laughs> There's none left. He feels the pain of the loss of the cocaine. It's just. (laughs) Just imagining him just, you know, clouds of cocaine coming off his naked body going, I need off cocaine. He's like pink pen from peanuts, except for cocaine. Cocaine, yeah. Instead of a little cloud of dirt, he exists in a little cloud of cocaine. I think it's sniffing at the air. I think at this point, if you like cut him like Cocaine would just start leaking out like a like a fucking hourglass. Does that make him cocaine Jesus? This is my buddy. This is my blood, which is also cocaine. (laughs) You get a lot more people at mass if the Eucharist was cocaine. 